Hey team, today we're going to talk about leadership with Lieutenant Colonel Kobe Short. Uh, Kobe is a 1997 grad from West Point, football player, 4-0 against Navy That's while right. you were there, so thanks for that. Uh, Kobe's an engineer officer, he's deployed to Kosovo, he's deployed twice to Afghanistan, and then he took his battalion to Korea on the regional uh, deployment during battalion command. He commanded 91st engineers in the 1st Cavalry Division, Fort Hood, and after he finishes the war college, he's going to take over a brigade level engineer district in uh, uh, headquartered out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, Kobe's married to his wife Maureen, who's uh, also a West Point grad and served uh, almost nine years in the Army. Um, and she's out now and, and she's a professional, works for uh, General Motors. And he's got two kids, an 11 year old boy and a nine year old girl. So great Army family there. But uh, so, Kobe, as a battalion commander, um, you know, you commanded 91st Engineers. What did you look for or expect from your junior leaders? Okay. I think what I expected, uh, two things come to mind. One is, uh, is positivity, I'll use that word, and, and then attitude. And uh, those were most important to me because I think that the, the positive attitude that you can, you can set for your organization, uh, especially at the platoon leader level, um, can go a long way. And what I mean by that is, you know, often if you're a, a whiner, a complainer, um, you know, things of that nature, um, it can just, you know, kill the morale. And so as a junior leader, um, you need to go out with a, with a positive attitude and lead your organization, which is generally at the platoon level or as a company XO, and, and to maintain that, that uh, high standard of, of positive attitude. So it's, that's great because it takes the pressure off. Like, yeah. you don't have to come in and be the expert, you don't have to have all the answers, you know, be physically fit and and maintain a positive attitude and learn and, and and you're going to do well so let's go back a little bit farther if you could go back to talk to cadet kobe short what would you tell him to set him up for success in, in his career yeah cadet kobe short uh well i think i heard you said before part of it's just surviving but uh but in general you know the the thing that i think stays with you if i could have could go back is is to learn those lessons about how to one lead peers and then two how to be a follower, and uh, and that's a lesson that potentially I could have you know paid more attention to, uh, but would urge you know any leader today to go back and look at that because even though now you know we're at the maybe the brigade level of leadership, you still have peers and you still have uh, you know have to follow um, those bosses of yours and uh, those lessons you learn as a cadet uh, I think stay with you your whole career. Peer leadership, I think, is the hardest kind of hardest kind of leadership. I know I wasn't good at it as a cadet, and uh, continuing to learn and get better, and and to be a follower because we're always, right. you know, we're always following someone else too. So that's that's important. Um, Kobe, you've you've worked for a lot of different leaders in your career, a lot of um, officers that went on to become generals. Um, who is the best leader you ever worked for, and and what did you take away from the, from your time with them? Yeah, best leader. I mean, two that come to mind, which I'm not going to elaborate on. I, I worked for General Lloyd Austin and, and Lieutenant General Burke Garrett, who you and I both worked for, Eric, and both great leaders. But uh, I think the best leader, as I thought about this, is is a, is a guy named First Lieutenant Jason Martin. And Jason Martin was my first company executive officer when I came in to Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Um, haven't talked to Jason in 20 years. Uh, but he set an impression and what he did is you're so impressionable as a second lieutenant when you show up to a unit and Jason had a high standard he set the bar high and he like we just talked about was leading peers you know three different platoon leaders and uh, his hard work uh, the way he treated you know his peers and the, and the company and the way he was a selfless servant to the company commander really I think set me off on a path where you know it, it led me to personal success and then the success of the organizations I've been a part of. So Jason Martin, you know, believe it or not, uh, though we only crossed paths for a small portion, um, I was such an impressionable, impressionable lieutenant that uh, I would say Jason Martin was the best best uh, leader I've been around. Yeah, that sounds like he made a great impression on you. I know the lieutenants in 3rd of the 502nd, the senior lieutenants, made a huge impression on me and a lot of them are very successful in the Army now. Uh, Colonel Pat Work, commanding right. 2nd Brigade 82nd, was was formative in bringing me in. So like you said, that peer leadership is is really important. Um, so if we went and we grabbed all the lieutenants from the 91st, got them in a room and we said, what what was Colonel Short's thing? What did he always say? 
you know, what was his kind of number one leadership tip for, for those yeah. lieutenants? So my leadership tip. So one, let's understand I was a brigade engineer battalion. So I had an MI company, signal company, and engineer company, and uh, as well as logistics. Um, so my big uh, rallying cry, I guess, would be what was called saber excellence. And uh, excellence is, is achieving excellence in anything you do in life. And there were three things we said, you know, be mentally tough, physically strong, and technically sound. And across all of those different branches and MOSs that we had in the battalion, um, my SAR major and I really chose to choose, hey, we're gonna seek excellence in everything we do, whether that's making your bed when you get up in the morning, whether that's being a good father, uh, whether that's, you know, mopping the floor in the company area, um, and then translating that into, hey, you know, if I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it the best I can yeah. possibly do. And so I think if you went back and talked to the, the 91st team uh, during my time there, it would be, uh, you know, saber excellence, you know, achieve, seek, seek excellence in all you do in your life, and, uh, and that's gonna make things go much better. That's a great lesson, not just for our time in the Army, but like you said, for, for everything we do, um, whether it's our families, our jobs, transitioning out of the Army or, or in the future. So I uh, appreciate that. Saber excellence, I'll, I'll right. remember that one. Um, so the engineer branch is a very special branch. It's extremely diverse. Uh, you can have a construction engineer, you can have a combat engineer, you can have, um, you know, you're heading out to the district, you're heading out right. to, you know, waterways and dams and bridges and all those things. So as you look at junior engineer officers, what would be some advice you would give to them? Yeah, well, one, I think, you know, with the sapper here, you know, token engineer here sitting next to That's me. That's right. But, uh, uh, you know, as, as an engineer lieutenant, and then as you go on, you know, first that comes to my mind uh, is, is being tough. Now that's one thing, and, and a master of our trade. And so as an engineer officer, you know, you're expected to kind of have the mental capacity to handle some of the things Eric just talked about with, uh, you know, dams, waterways, bridges, construction. Uh, but at the same time, you have to be tough in that you are fighting right alongside armor and infantry and artillery uh, branches there. Sometimes out in front of them. Exactly. Getting the reach open. Exactly. So I kind of preach uh, toughness there. Now, the second thing I would say as an engineer officer is taking pride in being a problem solver. And uh, as a lieutenant, you know, I worked with Eric a little bit there, but, you know, I was advising a lieutenant colonel or a battalion task force as a captain advising a brigade commander. And so ensuring that the maneuver force understands what you bring as an engineer to the fight is very important. And so, you know, again, back to, you know, one, being tough. Uh, and two, being a problem solver are uh, the two things as an engineer branch that I think you have to possess uh, to see success. Yeah, those are great. Those are great. So, Kobe, it's been, uh, thanks for being here today. Thanks for your leadership um, through the years. You know, we're, we're gonna be side by side there That's in right. command. You'll be in Pittsburgh and I'll be over in, uh, in Kentucky just a little bit away. And uh, thanks for being on Lopez on okay. Leadership today. Thank you, Eric.